Hello everyone, this is Angel Esquivel here, and I just want to announce before I make this video is um, thank you for the uh, 2,000 views that you guys gave me in my last video. Honestly, to be fair, I did not expect this video to like, my last video to make like 2,000 views. Like, I was just like, you know, just put my thoughts out there, you know, say whatever I want to say and just, but honestly, I did not thought I was going to make 2,000 views. Like, even though there's some people who did not agree with my views, some people did, but hey, I mean, we're all here to, you know, share our opinions and, you know, let out our own thoughts. And I'm glad that, and also I'm glad to hear people that don't agree because, you know, not everyone has to be the same, you know. But I just want to say thank you for the 2,000 views on my last video. Alright, let's get to the video. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about here are the 7 things that I wish to see in Godzilla Minus 2. So, without further ado, let's get to number 7. Number seven, Takashi Yamazaki back as director. Usually, when it comes to sequels, what what makes it what makes a good sequel better? Is it bigger, better? Me personally, I believe it's bringing back the same director who directed the first movie. For example, let's look at Guillermo del Toro's Pacific Rim. That movie is just perfect. Like I. I love the action. I love how the fact that Guillermo del Toro understands how kaiju movies work. Then we know, then we get to the sequel. It wasn't directed by him. And before that, I already knew this movie wasn't going to be good. And I've seen it, and yeah, it was pretty bad. Let's even look at a bigger example. Look at the first two Zack Snyder uh, DC movies he made. Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman. And then when someone, then they bring back Joss Whedon to direct Just League, which was supposed to be directed by Zack Snyder, but I'm glad that Just, Zack Snyder's Just League came on, but that movie was just bad. So yeah, I believe that Takashi Yamazaki back as director would really make Minus 2 a better film. And honestly, it's funny because I not, I'm not way too familiar with his uh, filmography, but when I searched his like, the movies he's directed, I realized that he directed Lupin the Third, the First, which before I even knew who he was, I actually seen Lupin, and it was a really funny movie. I actually really like how how goofy the characters were, and how and even just the story in action in general, which actually tells me that he actually knows a balance between like comedy and like seriousness. So, you know, I think it will be the best idea. To have Takashi Yamazaki back to direct Godzilla Minus 2. If. Number 6. Bring back the same cast and crew. If there's one problem that I always had with every Godzilla movie. Is that they always keep changing every character. Like in this movie we have this main character. And then the sequel now we just get new characters. Which is like. Well, wait, where was the connection to that, you know? It, it kind of leaves the... Um, it kind of leaves some, like, pe pe uh, viewers who just see the first movie kind of, like, confused, you know? And, for example, like, the MonsterVerse. We got, like, a really solid cast, you know? Like, Aaron Taylor-Johnson and Brian Cranston and Ken Watanabe. And... And after... You see, with Brian Cranston, he was... Literally a good character in the movie, and until they kill them off, and then we get, and then in the sequel they kill off Ken Watanabe's character. They, yeah, they just kill him off. Now we're stuck with new characters that nobody cares about, never developed. Well, until you know we get to you know them a little more, but sometimes we just prefer the first character from the first movie. So in minus two, I hope they do not make that same mistake, because. Because I really love the characters in Minus One, and I re they're actually very enjoyable to watch. So, it, it, like, I can just imagine, if they just change them in Minus Two, I would, like, I would just, like, okay, great. It's just another, it's just another story featuring Godzilla in it. Number five, make me cry. If there's one problem that Minus One uh, made, is that... No matter how emotional the scenes were, which I did find them sad, but the problem was, I didn't cry. And that already left me with like, damn, I wish this movie could have made me cry, you know? Like, I really feel for the characters, but I just didn't cry. That just tells me it what they it wasn't, the emotional part wasn't strong enough. 
So, I mean, if they're going to go back to that route again in the minus two, I just hope they, you know, make it a more a little more darker in the sad moments to actually make me cry. Because for me, I, I kind of have like a, yeah, I guess you, you need something way deeper to make me cry, you know. Number four, film it in a 16.9 aspect ratio. I love kaiju movies. I, I Ever since I was a kid, I grew up watching them like Cloverfield, Pacific Rim, and even the old Godzilla movies. If there's one problem I do have with uh, kaiju movies that every kaiju movie has has in common is that they're always filmed on a 22 or a 21.9 aspect ratio. Which, if you don't know what that means, that means it's just the black bars top and bottom. Basically just covering the bottom and the top. And it's like, like it's it's fine with some movies, but with kaiju movies, I kind of prefer they just film it in a full aspect ratio. So we can actually see the the size and the length of the monster. Because, like, when you just have Godzilla, like, wow, you see, he, you see him huge. And then we just have these black bars covering it. I was like, at the, the top and bottom, you're like, yeah, yeah, he's covering the, the entire screen, but I don't really know the full length. You know, I just wish I can see the full length. For three examples, Pacific Rim, Clover, uh, Cloverfield, I was about to say Cloverlink, and Avatar. What made Pacific Rim, um, like, what made Pacific Rim, like, the kaijus and the robots so large? What made the Cloverfield monster feel like he was actually there in the screen? What made Avatar seem like a large, infinite paradise? It's because they were filming a 16.9 aspect ratio. So I can, so when they're filmed like that, I can see and feel that these characters are actually there, like, there's... I can see that these characters are huge. I can see how Pandora is like a large jungle that is just infinite. I can see like the Cloverfield monster like really there and scary. So I hope minus one goes that route where they were like like how Matt Reeves uh, Pl Dawn of the Planet of the Apes like how in the sequel now they decide to film in a 16.9 aspect ratio. I hope they go for that route because me personally I'm kind of tired of kaiju movies being filmed with a 21 or 22 aspect ratio. I kind of prefer like the full screen IMAX scale. Okay, get ready for these last three because the reason why I mentioned these last three is that they're going to have some ties and connections to them. So for number three, add another monster. So yeah, of course, like it's kind of going down that uh, Showa, Heisei, and like the Millennium Era where they just add another monster, which me personally, I don't mind. But, um, I really think, like, instead of having Godzilla as a villain all the time, which, I well, actually, I still prefer Godzilla to still be a villain, but I would like to they have, like, another villain, you know? Kind of like a Freddy versus Jason scenario. So, me, my biggest choice with, um, with another monster in Minus 2, I would say Hidora. I would say he's, like, like, the closest monster to actually look, like, like, that would probably fit, like, the the tone of Minus 2. I mean, he does, how Godzilla represents, like, the, like, the, the damage of the nuclear bomb, and Hidora represents, like, the, the nuclear waste of what humans cause, you know? And, I, and, I was, and honestly, I think he's, like, one of the scariest, like, um, Showa monsters, because during the Showa era, it was, like, very goofy, but I would say Hidora was actually one of the scariest looking monsters during the the Showa era. So I really think he w would fit the, the, um, the sequel. Number two, make it rated R. Look, I know like most Godzilla like fans will probably not agree with me on this. And I know it's kind of rare to like think of a Godzilla rated R movie. I mean, it's funny because at first we were close. We were about to get this close to for Godzilla versus Kong. But, you know, it eh, doesn't really matter. But the reason why I say that is because if you're going to add scenes of, you know, like, Godzilla or any kaiju just stomping on humans, biting them off, throwing them across the building, being crushed by buildings. Might as well add some blood to it so I actually know that they're legit dead. And and also, the reason why I say rated R is because this leads to me to number one. For our final and number one is, drumroll. Man, that was a shitty drumroll. Zombies. I honestly thought of this, and I really think that 
this will be kind of a game changer when it comes to like Godzilla movies because I mean we're adding nuclear like metaphors to Godzilla so and the fact in watching in minus one like seeing how Godzilla in the ocean like infecting the fish around him that they that died like if you've seen in the movie it will make sense to actually add like some virus like in the minus two to make humans become zombies and like zombie like Godzilla's you know for instance, take a look at this picture that I have on the screen. And also, also I do want to shout out to this Instagram account. He actually has really good fan art. And and if you haven't seen his Instagram, I recommend you go check it out. He has really good fan art, especially this one I actually put out. This is actually my favorite. So about this fan art, when I saw this fan art, I really thought that this could be an idea. Because if we've seen in, the, in Minus One... We saw that she, she, I mean, she looked like she was about to die during the nuclear uh, blast in the city. What was it? No, uh, what was it? Noriko, yeah. And how it, during the ending, it, it, we zoomed into her neck having this black sting on her neck. That tells us that something's very sinister is about to happen. Like, it's not over yet. And the fact that I saw this fan art, I was like, this is really, this is a really good idea. And I hope that they actually, I hope that the writer and the director look at this image and they're like, yes, this is a good idea. You know, and I, I, and this is why I mention like character, like uh, monsters like Hidora and I mention on number two, Rated R. And yeah, I just really, and I know like some Godzilla fans are like, like I said, you guys are not going to agree with me on this. You're probably saying that I'm just... I, I'm just saying this because of, oh, oh, I want things to be edgy. Of, sh of course, it sounds a bit edgy. But I did write a script on how the story will plan out. And the reason why I mention these three is because I think, it, it. of course, it may sound edgy. However, they all connect. And I really would appreciate if you guys actually listen to the story that I've actually written. Probably, like, within 20 minutes. So... Here goes the story. The story takes place after the events of Godzilla Minus One. Koichi, our main character, seeing, seeing Noriko in the hospital, still alive and well. Koichi, after crying and feeling relief, he finally expresses how he feels, saying his war is over and wants to start a new life with her, and asks to marry her. Noriko cries while saying yes. One year later, Koichi and Noriko finally married and have a wonderful life alongside with their adopted daughter. Noriko spelling out the biggest surprise, saying she's pregnant with their first child. Both Koichi and Noriko look at each other silently in happiness. They sense a bright future ahead of them, or so they thought. Two months in her pregnancy, Noriko senses something is not right about her body. Pieces, pieces of hair start to fall off. The veins in her eyes start to have a bluish-like color, like in the image I pulled out. She started getting back pain in her, in the back of her neck, like knives poking out of her back like the image I pulled out. However, the fact that she survived during the events of Minus One, during the nuclear blast, she wasn't alone. An outbreak has spread around Japan. The zombies have been described having blue eyes while having dorsal fins in the back of their, in the back of their backs, like Godzilla. Koichi Noriko their adopted daughter, and the other side characters that we knew from the first movie, have survived and trying to find a way to escape the outbreak while they find shelter or in a bunker. Meanwhile, not only God, not only zombies have caused an outbreak in Japan, but Godzilla, slowly through time, has resurrected and, pl and has planned his revenge back in Japan. As the zombies were slowly dying, like they were melting, 
They may have died, but the virus was still alive. They were like moving, like a bunch of ants, crawling, connecting to each other, forming to this giant mold of a mountain. Then sooner, it started taking shape of a, of a physical form, which the, mo which the monster took shape with red eyes and black mold covering its entire body. This monster would be known as Hidora. Godzilla makes it to Japan and sees this, that Japan has already been destroyed by this other monster. And now these two monsters will, cl will clash together. Now humanity, and especially Koichi, now that his war has come back to life to haunt him, now they have to figure out how to take down these two monsters that went from ground zero to minus two. Well, everyone, I hope that you enjoy this um, this made up story, fan story that I made up for Godzilla minus two, um, which I actually made it in this day, and um, it was just something that I actually really wanted to like, like put out and wanted to have my viewers to think like, what, what did they think about my uh, my 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 own made up story for the sequel, and of course like, and of course some people may not agree with me but I just want to like share my my idea for this sequel you know and also I do want to hear your made up story like or what do you guys wish for to see in Godzilla minus two so and I'm glad I'm glad you guys were able to you know sit down with me and listen to this story of mine well that's gonna be today's video so like comment share subscribe hit the bell notification icon up there my Instagram name is thunderstruck1810 also make sure to go to my offer up app you know I want to buy some items there go free go right ahead this is Angel Esquivel here and as always so I just got off um I hate my job roar, roar